that was right on time. The honorable member for Winnipeg Center. It is an honor to rise today as the NDP's critic for children, families and social development to address this historic legislation, Bill C-35. Finally, after so many years of struggle, we have a national child care legislation that accompanies a system of national child care. Let me begin by acknowledging the people who made this, syst or made this system and the bill we are debating today possible. There are too many names to mention, Madam Speaker, but let me say this. Generations of feminists, trade unionists, child care workers and advocates made this victory possible. They never, ever, Madam Speaker, gave up the fight. They didn't give up after the 1970 Royal Commission on the Status of Women's recommendation for a national child care program was ignored by the government of the day. They didn't give up after the 1993 Liberal Red Book promised a national child care only for that government to pursue deep cuts to social programs instead. And they didn't give up during the 10 years of a Harper government that viewed childcare as a dirty word. It has been 30 years since the Liberals promised a national child care program, and as a result of the relentless advocacy, we finally find ourselves here today. And I, a proud new Democrat, along with my colleagues, am proud to stand here today in support of Bill C-35 on behalf of our party that has always prided itself in being a feminist movement and a vocal advocate for affordable, accessible, universal child care programs. Yeah. Our party prides itself on standing alongside organizations advocates and unions in their demonstration of courage and their commitment, even when the possibility of a national child care seemed so unlikely. It's because of their tenacity, their refusal to quit even when the odds were against them, that we are here today. I stand on their shoulders. We stand on their shoulders. I also want to acknowledge the role that our party, and particularly women in the NDP, have played in getting us to this point. Olivia Chow, the former MP for Trinity Spadina, is a child care champion. Her private member's bill, Bill C-373, laid out a foundation for an affordable, accessible and high-quality national child care system. More recently, my colleague MP for London, Fan London Fanshawe built on these efforts with her own Bill C-311. I am grateful to them both, Madam Speaker, for their work in moving this issue forward and demonstrating what a positive role for the federal government in ensuring families can have access to child care they need, when they need it, looks like. And finally, I wish to thank the Minister for Families, Children and Social Development, the Member of Parliament from Burlington and her team for the collaborative approach they've taken with this legislation. The Minister sought out our feedback and was receptive to many of our suggestions about what should be included in this legislation. And although, Madam Speaker, there are still areas where this bill can and should be strengthened, I am delighted that several of our key recommendations did find their way into the current version of the bill. And I will address uh, some of these key recommendations in more detail later. But I wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge how I appreciated very much the Minister's openness to our feedback. By establishing a long-term commitment for federal funding to provinces and Indigenous peoples and enshrining the principles of a national system of early learning and child care, Bill C-35 will help ensure that parents across Canada can access affordable, accessible and high-quality child care now and into the future. In the midst of a cost-of-living crisis, where the price of almost everything, Madam Speaker, has increased, child care is a rare exception. 
Parents in many cities across the country are seeing child care savings as significant as 50 percent, providing real relief to thousands of families. It is a vital and is that the target of $10 a day child care by 2026 is not only achieved, but sustained for the long term. I will note, however, that not all cities and provinces have met their fee reduction targets. Uh, one uh, province in particular, Madam Speaker, is Manitoba, who has conspicuously lagged behind, a topic I will return to later again. Nevertheless, the child care agreements are delivering significant fee reductions for parents from coast to coast. It is important that this continues indefinitely, not just for five years until the agreements need to be renewed. Much like our system of universal health care, child care must be a permanent feature of our social safety net. The commitment to long-term funding is also crucial for advancing gender equality in this country. Child care is a feminist issue. It gives working women the ability to choose when and how they wish to re-enter the workforce after having a child. The Quebec model of low-cost child care offers a powerful example of this. Indeed, Quebec's investments in a universal child care have resulted in women's participation in the workforce increasing between 8 and 12 percent, Madam Speaker. Not only has this boosted Quebec's economy, it has improved the financial security of women. It means a greater portion of household income is now under the control of women, which gives them more security in the case of separation, including in cases where they need to leave an abusive relationship. This is what feminist public policy looks like. And I often hear members of Parliament sharing stories about the struggling single parent mother trying to make ends meet. In fact, the member from Carleton and now leader of the Conservative Party of Canada often invokes the experiences of single moms in Parliament. Now, I can be certain that he has never been a single mother, Madam Speaker. If he had been, maybe he wouldn't be so quick to oppose a national child care program which will help thousands of single moms and children across this country yeah, yeah. have a better life. Yeah, yeah. Because, Mr. Speaker, I in fact was a single mom. I was very fortunate at the time to have stable employment teaching in a post-secondary education at the time. However, even on an academic salary, I often had difficulty making ends meet, paying up to $650 a month at the time in monthly child care expenses. This resulted in me having to take on more employment, which resulted in me having less time with my precious son, something that I have lasting mother's guilt about, having to leave him so that I could provide for him. I'm lucky to have such a wonderful son who I adore. And looking back, maybe if there had been a national child care program at the time, our life might have looked much different. Yeah. I was exhausted and my son missed his mother. More affordable child care, let alone $10 a day child care, would have changed my life and my son's life. So I say to the member, to any member of the House who uses the story of str struggling single mothers for political gain, without having been one themselves, that they should vote in favour of this bill and support a system of national child care That's now. Right. Right. Returning to the bill itself, Madam Speaker, beyond the long-term funding commitment, C-35 contains another important provisions that we pushed for and managed to have incorporated into this bill. First is the inclusion of international human rights conventions and declarations that enshrine access to child care as a human right. Preambular paragraph 3 affirms a commitment to further realization of the right to child care as recognized in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. This is something that child care advocates have long demanded for and the NDP fought for. 
Preambular paragraph three also affirms the commitment to furthering the implementation of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and contains important references to other international conventions, including the UN Convention on the Right of Persons with Disabilities and the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, something other uh, inclusions that the NDP fought for. We called for rights-based language to be included in the bill, and I'm pleased that it has been included in the bill. Secondly, and highly significantly, Bill C-35 gives explicit priority to child care programs and services offered by public and not-profit providers as one of the principles guiding federal funding. This is a provision fought for and won by the NDP. It is a win for parents because public and non-profit child care means affordable, quality and accessible daycares for families who need it, rather than daycares that make profits off the backs of parents. We also know that an emphasis on public and non-profit child care means better wages and working conditions for staff in the system. Study after study, union after union have heeded these calls for a public, not-for-profit child care system. If, if anybody in this House says they stand with workers, then they need to stand with a public, non-profit child care system, Madam Speaker. Taking care of our kids shouldn't be on the backs of parents. Kids are not a business. The focus should be on providing the best possible care at a price parents can afford, not delivering a profit for shareholders. And while all of what I describe represents an important step forward. As I mentioned previously, there are areas where this bill can and should be improved. One of the improvements is that, that is required is adding explicit commitment to decent work for child care staff. At this point, I will digress briefly to say that I was once, as many people know in the House, an early childhood educator. And, Mr. Speaker, if you had, Madam Speaker, if you had told me all of those years ago that I would one be in this place debating a national child care legislation, I would have not believed you. Workers are at the heart and soul of a national child care system, but far too long, child care workers have been grossly underpaid and undervalued in spite of the fact that they perform some of society's most critical work. That's why I left the profession, even though I loved the kids that I was teaching every day. I loved the work, but I couldn't afford to continue in a profession that did not pay a living wage or provide good benefits. A national child care program will only be successful and sustainable if the workers who make it possible are treated with dignity and paid fairly for their labour. That's why I support the Canadian Labor, Labor Congress's call for the legislation to include clear commitment to decent work for child care staff. Every child care worker deserves to earn a living wage with benefits that they can support their family with. And as an aside, it is also vital for the federal government to develop a workforce strategy to address staffing shortages in the sector. When we talk about creating new spaces, the building is not the most important element. It's having trained staff to look after the kids in these new child care spaces. A workforce strategy that can help ensure that we are continuously expanding child care options where the demand is greatest. The bill can also be strengthened in terms of the accountability and transparency it provides. While the creation of a National Advisory Council is welcome in terms of the expert advice that it will provide, it does not have enforcement power to ensure that the provisions set out in C-35 are followed. It is important for the bill to include strong accountability mechanisms so that the commitments it contains are upheld. The reporting requirements on the progress being made in establishing a national child care and federal investments in the sector lack detail, stating only that the minister 
is required to make an annual report. This is too vague, and the bill should speci or specify the specific metrics, including new spaces being built, new child care workers being hired, mm -hmm. and other quantitative details. It is vital that members of the public at Parliament have access to this crucial information. It should also establish conditions on a federal child care funding, real accountability for when provinces fail to deliver on fee reductions, or an expansion of public not-for-profit care. I'm deeply concerned that Manitoba is the only province where we have not seen an average reduction in fees. Instead, the government has made changes to who is eligible for the subsidy. This is unacceptable. Also concerning is the Ontario government's decision to remove profit caps, paving the way for an expansion of for-profit care. I know that this government has said there are accountability mecha mechanisms built into the bilateral agreements, but either they are inadequate or not being properly enforced, or both. I'm also aware that Bill C-35 doesn't supersede the bilateral agreements, which are legally binding, and so can't impose new terms on top of these existing agreements. However, I am hoping that the bill can be amended to provide stronger conditions that apply on an ongoing going basis or on a going forward basis to future agreements after the current ones expire five years from when they are concluded. Right now, the bill says nothing about, about how future agreements will be enforced to ensure accountability for the funding, and this is a notable gap that we should address. While there are more opportunities to weigh in on the bill at committee and in this chamber, I want to conclude again by acknowledging the gravity of what we are discussing today. We have progressed from being a country where childcare was seen as the sole responsibility of mothers, unpaid labour with which our society could not function, to a country where childcare is now just an individual responsibility, but a, not just an individual responsibility, but a collective one. A country where we will finally have national legislation underpinning a national system of child care in every province and territory. After years of false starts and broken promises, that is something we can all take pride in. To the women, to the workers, to the advocates who have helped make this dream a reality, your tenacious efforts have made our country fairer, more just and inclusive. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.